Today, I'm gonna compare this festering pile of crap, the RX 6500 XT, to an NVIDIA Quadro T600. And then, once I realize that that's actually a pretty terrible comparison, I'll compare it to something else. Oh, it's such a cute little loser graphics card. Thank you very much, Gigabyte, for sending it over for this video. That is some sparse video out action. Now, the main reason why I thought it was a good idea to compare the very warmly received RX 6500 XT to the Quadro T600 is because they're both in stock at the moment for about the same amount of money. In all fairness, on paper, they do seem comparable in that they're both graphics cards, and considering that these are some of the few graphics cards actually available at the moment, I think it's worth checking out how they stack up. Oh, it's so tiny! Look at how little and cute that GPU die is! It's so small, in fact, that in comparison, the T600 die looks like it subsists off a diet entirely of steroids and horse tranquilizers. And Gigabyte seems to use a thermal putty to interface with everything on the PCB, which does tear when you remove the cooler, and that means that you do have to replace that if you want to repaste your cooler. You can actually see the four PCIe lanes coming off it, which is fascinating. With that, let's check out the gaming performance of these two unlikely combatants. Now, just to set a quick baseline with the T600, this is GTA 5 running at 1080p high settings, and um, it's, it's running very well. We're getting almost 120 frames per second. It, it, it dips down to about the high 90s every now and then. All in all, this is a pretty good gaming experience. It looks nice, it runs well, the power draw is actually very low, so that Quadro card can go in some very small systems and you don't need to worry about, you know, your power supply being overburdened or whatever. So even a more demanding game like Battlefield 5 running at medium settings at 1080p gives you a pretty consistent 60-ish frames per second on this, uh, this Quadro T600. I am very curious to see how that RX 6500 XT is gonna stack up here. Um, because yeah, this is, this is usable, right? This is a pretty good gaming experience. It's not amazing, but it's, it's usable. With that, let's try out everyone's favorite graphics card. I love how even according to AMD's drivers, this brand new graphics card already needs to be upgraded. That, that tells you a lot about how AMD feels about this card. And then I made a shocking discovery. The 6500 XT doesn't have an encoder on it, so it can't screen capture. What, what is this thing? What was AMD thinking? After taking the necessary time to calm myself down after this complete outrage, I moved on to the gaming. I was ready for this to be much worse than the T600, I'm not gonna lie. Um, but it is... It is already doing quite a bit better. In all fairness, it does use almost double the power and it's got almost double its core frequency. So yeah, I'd really hope that it would be faster than the T600, to be honest. <laughs> okay, um, now granted, Battlefield 5 does love AMD GPUs, uh, but this is considerably better at 1080p <laughs> medium settings than the T600. Uh, so if you really like Battlefield 5, the, the 6500 XT is actually a pretty solid bet, it seems. Now, I was quite butthurt by the victory of this encoderless loser, so I decided to take a Gladius to the 6500 XT's Achilles heel for justice. Mm -hmm. 
On the surface, this performance feels relatively similar to how it felt before. This is GTA 5, mind you, this is quite an old game, uh, so it may be running fine because it, it's not running into the bandwidth limitation. It's maybe a little bit worse than it was before, but this is still a very playable result, so it's, it's not, not too bad. It's reasonably stuttery, but you know, that is a Battlefield 5 party trick. Now at this point, I was quite confused because I was under the impression that going from PCIe Gen 4 to Gen 3 would be like amputating one of the 6500 XT's legs, but I honestly couldn't tell the difference until I tried Doom Eternal. Oh, okay, well apparently going to PCIe Gen 3 does not make a big difference to the performance, I guess it just depends on the game. It seems like some games go from running fine to running like they've just had a colonoscopy. Okay, so clearly comparing the 6500 XT to the T600 was a mistake, and I probably should have known that going in. But I found a different comparison which may make a bit more sense. Let's drop in this RX 5300, which is like an unreleased AMD budget card from just over a year ago, and see how these two compare. Now you see, this is a much better comparison to the 6500 XT. This graphics card has a much smaller number for a name, and it seems to be performing quite similarly. Although, aside from numbers, which are maybe a bit smaller, it does have one massive advantage over the 6500 XT, and it is that if I press Control shift e we get a recording happening! I cannot understand why the 6500 XT does not have a video encoder in it, but a RX 5300 does. It, it makes no sense to me, none at all, uh, but yeah, let's see what this graphics card makes of uh, a, a more demanding game. This is running about the same, honestly, as the 6500 XT, uh, give or take a couple frames per second, but this feels basically the same. And then you have the advantage of this. I know I keep talking about it, but it, it just annoys me that they removed that feature from a graphics card, which every graphics card that's been released in the last five years has had without question. Like, like come on, AMD, what the hell? So in conclusion, it seems like what AMD should have done was just actually launch the 5300 at its planned MSRP of $130 and they would have won the world. Uh, but they didn't do that, so they, they didn't win the world. Um, maybe next time, AMD, maybe, maybe you'll get them next time. Anyway, with that, thank you for watching. If you enjoyed the video, do consider subscribing to the channel. My mom actually told me that she'll give me the day off school tomorrow if I got 20 subs off this video, so you have the power to make that happen. And yeah, anyway, thank you for watching. Bye-bye.